Eddie is away today. I feel like I say that a lot. Eddie is away this evening at Eddie's away today. He, actually, Eddie's away for five days. He's gone to help his his piper out. He's, he's gone to help his sister and brother-in-law and their family move to Tennessee. So he went with his brother Mark. And so I'm here to run the farm on my own. This video is sponsored by Major Dairy AI Services Limited. No, I'm just joking. I have lots of help. We have Ed here. Ed's a friend from church. He's helping to do a lot of the chores in the morning. And he is a re retired dairy farmer himself. And then we have Bryson here feeding calves sometimes. And Eddie's friend Albert's coming in a bit too. So we've got lots of help. Unfortunately, it, it may not look or sound like it, but I am feeling so, so sick. I made the sheets on our guest bed because my mom's going to be coming and staying with us a bit and I was just exhausted. I had to take like three breaks during the process so that's just not normal. Mom, so I was going to start with chores this morning but we ended up getting Bryson in to help instead because I'm just feeling so out of it. So yeah, we'll touch base with you later. It's Sunday morning and we didn't go to church because when we went out to the barn there was a new calf born. So I had to deal with that and also I'm feeling like trash so don't want to spread any germs. I decided it would be good to make a pot of soup to use throughout the week. Sunday afternoon, the kids and I came out this morning to check on things. Eddie left early this morning and of course there was a new calf born just after Eddie left. So Ed, not my husband, our friend Ed helped take care of that this morning, which was great. We have a calf that I'm treating with penicillin. So I'm gonna do that now. And my dad is in the dairy barn. He is helping with pushing feed in right now. And then we're gonna get that newborn calf out in a hutch. This is the calf here that I have to treat. I don't know if I actually got any of that on video, but she gave me a little bit of a run for my money there, which is uh, not actually great to get her moving around like that. She's got a serious lung infection, but that also helps me to see who else is coughing and if anybody else needs any treatment. I'm also gonna give them some crumbles, which is a respiratory treatment that they can eat because this, this up and down weather is not good for calves and their lungs and they can pretty easily get pneumonia. So it's kind of a preventative measure, kind of. I'll let these guys lick these up and then I'll give them some more feed from over here. So Eddie told me to give crumbles to each little pen and I'm not exactly sure if this one is classified as a little pen and he doesn't have his roaming on so I don't really have any way of getting in touch with him. So I think I will give it to them. I hope that that's the right thing to do. You can see we have a couple calves here with ring or heifers with ringworm. That one has some ringworm there on her face. And the one beside those brown spots is ringworm. And we used to have a huge issue with ringworm in this barn. I don't know guys, is I supposed to give you that? I'm not sure. But we used to have a huge issue with ringworm in this barn like years ago. And then, I'm not exactly sure when it just went away, which is rare, like you don't usually get ringworm to just go away unless you clean out the full barn and disinfect it, but it happened, and so now it's kind of too bad to have some back, but hopefully it can go away again. I got my helper with me now.
in the barn now for evening chores. Albert's helping me in the barn and I am going to feed cats and then do the heifer chores and yeah. The one cow seems to be not cleaning properly, not letting go of her placenta properly, so we're gonna deal with that. Give her some oxytocin, I think. Other than that, there's not, not much exciting going on. If you're enjoying this video or have learned something new from it, I ask you to please give it a like as this really helps out our channel. So my dad and I got this new bull calf. Can't really see. We got this new bull calf out here earlier this afternoon brought him over in the wagon he seems to be doing okay and then these two are bulls and they'll be leaving tomorrow I'll be selling them tomorrow so I have to get some tape to mark their fences so that the calf guy knows which ones to pick up this super hutch is back at three calves if you watched our video from last week we had four in here but we moved one over into that one with a new buddy that was weaned Normally we don't do so much switching around, but I don't know, this is a weird winter weather-wise and calving-wise, and we just kind of make it work. So number 48 is the one we moved from the other hutch into this one, and then 49 is the one that was weaned in a single hutch, and we moved her into this group hutch. They're both really nice looking calves, and we think they'll do totally great. And we don't plan on putting any more in here. These two here, 50 and 51, they are just about the same age. I think they're born two days apart. So they'll go into that super hutch after we move those ones out. I just noticed 48 in the super hutch coughing a bit, so that is a bit concerning and I'm gonna keep an eye on her because I might have to start treating her with some medication to help from pneumonia setting in. You can see Albert in there, working away. What you doing, Piper? Can't find one of my feed pails. So I'm down to one. That'll take a bit longer, but oh well. This is Albert. He's being camera shy. Albert, how long have you known Eddie? Since like kindergarten? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So these are the two fresh cows. That white one is the one that calved this morning. And this one about four days ago. But Eddie doesn't want her in with the group until he's back. She didn't clean her placenta fully, so he just wants to make sure she's strong and healthy before putting her back with the main milking herd. And you can see that white one's having trouble cleaning her placenta properly. I'm just checking the weather through the night to decide whether I should put calf hutch doors on and how open or closed I should have the hutch vents. I checked the low temperature, wind speed, and wind direction to make those decisions.
halves are done. Albert did the heifers, so thanks Albert, I don't have to do that. And I just have to turn the lights off. I'll go check the heifer lights and feed the cats if Albert didn't, but yeah, so far so good. Dairy farming is super repetitive. You do the same things every day, so I'll try to keep this video a little exciting for you. I do have to come back around eight or nine to do the job that Eddie usually does. He usually does the final feed push of the night. Good night, Piper. What are you doing? Well, I'm back. It's just about nine o'clock now. Great, I'm in my pajamas. Now I'm gonna get Piper slobber all over them. The walk over was a little scary, I'm not gonna lie. It was, my, my hat lamp is not working. The yard light is out. While I was trying to get my hat lamp to work, I bumped into a, a driveway marker, so that scared the daylights out of me. But uh, I made it and I'm gonna push feed in and say goodnight to the girls. I don't think I mentioned, but my mom and dad are, were here helping me today. My dad left, but my mom's spending the night because I'm gonna be out here first thing in the morning too. And she's like a kid whisperer. She had, it was like 7.15 when I was in earlier and she had all the kids in bed asleep. So thanks mom, it's helpful. So now I'm gonna go in and go to bed and I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Good morning, I think it's about 5.30 at this point by the time myself and the girls are out here. Our son Eli, he was up a lot of times in the night. He had, yesterday he had a sledding accident and hurt his arm, so I think I'm probably gonna have to take him to Emerge today to get his arm looked at. I wonder if it's broken and I'm feeling like garbage with my, my throat issues, so fun day. Today is a P PD day. I need to figure out how to handle all that today. I'm in here feeding calves, and then when Ed gets here, we'll milk the fresh cows together so that I can show him how to do it. Thanks for joining us, thanks for being here, and let's go. So it looks like she's probably cleaned properly, which is great, and I'm gonna get these girls up and in, into the fetch area to get milked. the next one's in. Now I'm putting pieces of tape on the calf hutch fences so that the trucker for picking up the calves knows which ones to pick up. Okay, so I'm all done. I'm heading back to the house now. I vaccinated the calf to move it into the super hutch with the two calves while I was outside and I went into the heifer barn and gave another shot of penicillin to that young heifer with a lung infection and now I'm heading in for breakfast. One thing that's really nice about farm chores in the morning is you get to see the sunrise which is uh, always a reminder of a new day, a clean slate and it really is a beautiful thing, it never gets old. And uh, on this new day with a clean slate, I'm gonna drop the girls off at my friend's house and take Eli to the hospital to get his arm checked out. That is the plan for today. Wish us luck. Ed's in the heifer barn using the skid steer to clean it out. And uh, we're, uh, we're doing okay without Jetty.
Hey guys, so I did take Eli into the hospital this morning and we were there for about two and a half hours. He got x-rayed and the doctor doesn't think that he has broken anything, but he's gonna get a pediatric specialist to look at it and see if that is not the case. And then they'll give me a call if they think one of his, cause kids have growth plates in their elbows and things. Lila's broken hers before, so they think that that might be potentially an issue, but I'm hoping not to get a call, but I'm really, I'm skeptical that nothing's broken because he's in a lot of pain and he's swollen and I just feel bad for the little guy. I'm heading to the barn now this afternoon to push feed in and check on things. It's about 2.30 in the afternoon. We all just had a nap. My friend watched the girls and sent us home with lunch, which was lovely and then we had a quick nap and well actually the younger two are still sleeping and then i'm here going to the barn to push feed check on things see how everybody's doing we had our milk picked up this morning by the milk truck the milk truck comes every other day and i'm going to get a water sample to get our water tested for um a self declaration for proaction which is um just to make just kind of to tell dairy farmers of ontario that you're following all the rules and included in that is a water sample. Just put that there for now. So right away I see a problem. There's supposed to be two cows in the sick pen and I only see one. So we had two fresh cows, 1113 and 1114 and 1113 is not in there anymore. So she must have gone through the robot on her own which probably means her colostrum got dumped on the floor too, which I'm gonna go check and then I'll have to go find her and bring her back to the sick pen and I'm actually not sure how to she's not sick she's not sick she's just fresh but we like to keep them in here I don't know why oh the gate, the gate wasn't on automatic I'm gonna have to call Eddie and figure out how to do that shoot okay so I don't see milk dumped all over the floor in the robot room. I'm gonna check, try to check the robot. Oh, is that you? That's you, she's, she's right here. But I'm gonna check the robot to see if she's been through. So it's showing here that she did go through, but her milk is not on the floor. So I'm just kind of confused. I'm not able to get through to Eddie, so in the meantime, I'm just gonna get her back in this pen I had locked the robot so that that 1113, that white cow couldn't get in, but now I'm gonna unlock it so that this one can come in. This is just a cow from the herd. She came in, wants to get milk. There's always something. Poor Lila's gonna be worried because I told her I would just be a couple minutes and now this has happened and ah. Uh. Okay, so I was on the phone with Eddie there while pushing feed and he set me straight on a few things. The, the sick pen did have a, a chain on the gate, so they weren't supposed to go in on their own, but they busted through it. So I found it just laying in the straw and put a new clip on it. So they're all set and I was able to get in touch with the robot company or the our, our dealer to work out how to get that cow so how to get how to get that white cow sorted back into the sick pen on her own and that shouldn't happen again so now all I have to do is just get that water sample so it's been almost two days without Eddie and uh, the kids are starting to get a little weepy the tears are coming out I miss daddy and uh, I'm getting a little humbled by all Eddie does around here and I certainly miss him. Uh, we're hanging in though and we're doing pretty good I think. Tonight I'm heading back out for chores. I'm gonna be feeding calves and Albert is gonna come again to do the barn chores. Hello. Just peeking through the window, there are two cows in there. Beautiful. 
The white cow is laying and chewing her cud, so that's an awesome sign. That means her stomach is working. The black cow's... I'm gonna go check. Black cow's not. She's just kind of laying there, so that's definitely something we need to watch for to make sure she's staying healthy. Another thing I'm checking is to make sure their milk production keeps going up and up and up instead of laying flat or staying, staying flat or going down. No new babies over there. That's good, we don't have anybody due for a while. Things are looking good with these ladies. Got a cow in this robot here. And the other one's empty right now. Once Albert gets here and starts raking stalls and walking around with them, then they'll get up and start coming to the robots to get milked. Are you hungry? I'm getting colostrum out of the fridge to feed to our new calf. I'm heating it up in a pail of warm water. We soak our bottle nipples in bleach water about twice per week, so I'm sorting them out from tight to loose as I'm putting them away. Okay, so I'm gonna change the filter behind me here. So we have two filters. Since we have robots and they, the cows can be milking anytime, we have two filters that switch back and forth so that if there's milk coming through, it's always being filtered and it doesn't have to stop. So the light that's lit up is the one, is the filter that's being used right now. I'm gonna change the one, uh, the other one. And I have before done this, I've made a mistake and had milk splattered all over me. So I'm gonna be extra careful this time. So you can see it's mostly sand that gets filtered and then some little clumps of, uh, like, milk. Goes in the garbage. So last night I forgot to do this and I was laying in bed and I realized I forgot to do it. So I had to come out and do it. these two bulls, bull calves got picked up today. When I looked out from the milk house, I thought they didn't. I thought they were still here, but no, they're good. They're picked up, so I'll wash their coats, get them fresh for the next calves to come. And now I have a bit less milk replacer I have to make. Live lessons come one in a dozen. The other eleven give something from nothing. I sit here looking for an answer Maybe the biggest question was in the last chapter You gave me the soul I had to take Without you I never could have moved away Well, things got a little exciting. That's not the dog. That is my curious bull calf who jumped out the window. Well, that's a wrap on part one. Join us next week to see what crazy things happen on the final stretch of running the farm without Eddie.